but it isn't too good to be worthless. Yes, no, of course. <laughs> the, 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 only, the problem with that is that um, it tends to happen as you get older is that kind of younger generations start to say that about you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I remember really what Noam said. Thing. I said, Noam, um, I remember I was once walking down the street, uh, uh, Vassar Street with him. I never forgot this. And I said, Noam, who's going to win this battle? And he said he thought that the uh, issue was all over. And I said, why? He said, because everything depends on what the graduate students ask and what questions the graduate students are interested in. And that's really uh, how my experience of the field went. But there, was a, but there was something I wanted to say to you, and that is that what I shared with you was this incredible, eye-opening revelation that language was a symbol-manipulating system. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I read syntactic structures and I saw his analysis of the auxiliary, that was incredible. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> you know, there, there is a there is a tremendous uh, formal beauty to uh, to language as Chomsky and, and Halley analyzed it, and I think some of it is uh, is might be um, elegant description of historical processes, but I think some of it also is a, a description of psychological processes. And I think the empirical question is, what is really a description of history and what's really a description of psychology? Mm -hmm. um, let me mention one other connection, since it is, uh, I think, a, 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 it's become increasingly of interest, I guess, to me as I've kind of gone full circle to the really exciting cosmic questions that were raised in this, this uh, uh, article when I was a, a freshman. Um, I often get asked, um, do you also um, agree with Chomsky's politics since, and also the corresponding question is, what's the connection between uh, Noam's theory of language and his theory of, and his political orientation, since both of them are so striking, are so radical by the standards of, of uh, I guess, the larger intellectual context. Um, in my case, my, uh, I guess my... Uh, I was influenced by Chomsky's argument in a um, book, that not cited very much, but uh, since it came out when I was an undergraduate, it had a, a big effect on me, called Reflections on Language, which I think is one of Chomsky's most interesting books because it is the book that uh, lays out the connections between his theory of language, his theory of human nature, and his theory of politics. And I think it's the theory of human nature uh, that links the language uh, ideas and the political ideas um, Again, this is a major argument in the blank slate, is that a lot of people's reaction to theories of psychology are because they seem to embody pictures of human nature that have political consequences that people often are uncomfortable with or, or embrace. Uh, in the case of um, the um, Chomsky's, the, the link between his politics and his language, he properly says that these are logically independent uh, one should not be judged in terms of the other. One can be right, the other can be wrong. But that there is a discernible thread. Uh, and the discernible thread for Chomsky is that um, his, his view of his, his politics are those of, uh, he describes himself as a libertarian socialist. For many people, that's an oxymoron. But uh, <laughs> also uh, an anarcho syndicalist. Yes, anarcho syndicalist. That is a kind of a left wing anarchist as opposed to a kind of right wing Ayn Rand uh, capitalist anarchist. Uh, and the idea is that people have a spontaneous uh, tendency to cooperate, to produce for the sheer sake of it. We're just creative, productive organisms that have an autonomous need to create, uh, to express our thoughts, to create works of art, works of science, without regard for the reward or the consequences. And that the reason that you, the only way, first of all, the only way you can be an anarchist is if you believe that people are naturally good, uh, as opposed to, say, being a Hobbesian and believing that people uh, without a Leviathan uh, to control them will be at each other's throats. So you have to have a, a somewhat romantic view of human nature. And Chomsky does. He traces his ideas, some of his ideas, back to Rousseau, and the, the uh, uh, doctrine of the noble savage. And if you are um, not a capitalist, if you believe that uh, people don't have to be motivated by wages or profits, you have to have a conception of the human that we have an endogenous, spontaneous need to create for 
the sake of it. And in fact, the, the early Marx, who Chomsky also cites favorably, had this as part of his theory of alienation, that there's a natural human tendency to produce and cooperate, and that social institutions of capitalism kind of uh, suppress that, and also suppress the natural human uh, tendency to affiliate, to cooperate, to form uh, harmonious communities. So I think that is the, that's the, I think that's the deepest root of Chomsky's belief system. On the one hand, it leads to a uh, anarcho-syndicalist politics. On the other hand, it leads to a conception of language that emphasizes uh, productivity, creativity, the finite algorithm that can generate an infinite number of products. Um, and um, where I, uh, and it all, I'm sorry, the third thing is it also leads to a view of the evolution of language that would de-emphasize the utility of language as a system of communication, but rather say that language is not for communication, communication being something where you expect some effect and you do it in order to uh, get some effect on your uh, back from the person with whom you've uh, shared information, but rather it's just an endogenous system for externalizing or expressing thought. And language not being useful simply being an urge to create or express, therefore can't be explained in terms of its beneficial consequences, which of course is the essence of Darwinian natural selection. Things are selected because they're useful. Uh, they, they get you things. You, you tell someone else where the berries are, they tell you where the fish are. Both of you are less likely to starve. You have more babies. Those linguistic abilities uh, are passed on. That's the opposite of Chomsky's view, where language has nothing to do with finding out where the berries are. It's just an urge to create. And that's some, that is, I, I have to say that that's a view which is I think, fascinating and, and in some ways beautiful, but it's very different from my view. Uh, being a more rooting my own nativism in, in um, evolutionary biology, uh, I'm more impressed by um, uh, the Darwinian uh, arguments and evidence about where innate things come from and that makes it very hard to think of humans as, uh, first of all, developing any complex system uh, outside the evolutionary process, but also leads to a more Hobbesian view of human nature, that uh, I'm not an anarchist. Uh, I think liberal democracy is a very good thing, um, partly for reasons that Hobbes pointed out, namely that uh, in a state of anarchy, I think the empirical evidence suggests that um, anarchy in the dictionary sense of no government leads to anarchy in the vernacular sense of violent chaos. And so politically, I certainly part company from, from Chomsky in not being a, uh, a radical or an anarchist, but being a, a moderate and a, a big fan of liberal democracy. Uh, and it's because I think the view of human nature that impresses me is one that emphasizes that, uh, that we Although we do have a, a, some tendency to cooperate, there's also a, a dark side to human nature. And uh, that's the fundamental split. I think your description of, uh, of um, the Chomsky's um, uh, uh, focusing on the creative impulse in human